I'm just going to set you into the tripod. And once again, we are here and about to make us a plane. Now, what I will say to you is in this video, we are going to be making a very particular aircraft. Same as always, I've got an idea of what I want to do. And we are going to do it. So, here are some of our donor pieces, okay? And I, I basically want to do this a very particular way. So, I've got a couple different series of aircraft I'm building right now. One is 12 inch, which means every aircraft in the city, uh, sorry, in the city, in the city, uh, everyone in the series will be 12 inches. That's the 12 inch series. They will be with bigger motors, uh, six and a half to eight mil. And I will bring you those in the future. Now, uh, this one is going to be one of my ultra small series. And you might think, well, dude, 12 inches, that's pretty small, right? It is, and it is, that is a fact, but it's not that small, really. 12 inches is still big enough where turning around in a hallway is a real challenge. And if the aircraft isn't capable of 3D performance, it really won't be able to do that. Now, you see this? I've left myself this lip, and if you really look at it, I've actually gotten it quite perfect. So I'm going to leave that lip. And you're going to say, well, why in God's green earth would you do that? And I will show you. So what I'm building here is a little tiny cub. Okay? This is basically what it is. <coughs> so a little tiny cub trainer is about the easiest aircraft you could ever hope to design, guys. If I really wanted to just make myself a little tiny cub, this is what I do. Or at least a little simple flyer. It's so simple, guys. This is going to be a really quick video. Unlike the last one with the uh, P-47, this one's going to be quite quick. Because we're just going to take this and this. Now, we don't need a tail surface this big. Look at the size of the wing. It's a very tiny, tiny wing. But we can make this work on a scale flyer. This could be a tiny little RC airplane. However, if I wanted to do a Cub, even an indoors one, it won't fly all that well, relatively speaking, um, for indoor use. And the reason is they don't really have a hard turn radius. You need an aircraft that will turn over very, very quickly, guys, and have enough aileron authority to really make it work. Now, the P-47 is the one I recommend for beginners, and the reason is... It has enough authority on the ailerons that you can get a fairly fast roll rate, but it also is wide enough. It's also a big enough wing that you don't have to have it rolling over fast. It could, in fact, roll over very slow and gentle and be nice and smooth, all depending on your rates and the control input you give it, which is the idea. I wanted an aircraft that would give you the ability to fly really slow, and gentle and because of the amount of lift it has it can actually do that quite well now if you find when you build an aircraft it doesn't quite have enough lift now look at that see that it's a slightly wider wing but slightly longer so we're going to pull out and i'm going to show you guys these bits of information here we've got one at exactly six inches by one and an eighth basically okay we're looking at one and an eighth then on this wing we have just over one and a half okay you can see where it's up to here and if you can't for those of you who don't know your measurements i'm not going to get technical with this but if you go to one and a half inch and then move over one tick mark on your tape measure you're there and you're at the perfect depth for this wing then we're going to look at this one and see these little tick marks that are slightly longer you go to the second one of those in from six and you're perfect so these are both right around six inches and what we're going to do is we're actually going to make the bottom one the top wing and the bottom one is actually going to be the, the lower wing no we're going to go the exact opposite just because we're going to put this one out front, and it's going to slightly lead, or we could move it slightly back and have it sit slightly behind. And there are various things we could do 
with this aircraft. But first, I want to check these lines. And one of the ways I can do this is to move them over this straight line. And I can see that there's a slight hump right here. So I'm just going to take this and give it a very slight trimming. Anywhere I see that slight hump, I'm going to trim it off. Just like that. And now I'm going to compare it again. to that straight line. And you can see I've still got a little bit here. But when you really look, and you know that it's not straight, suddenly your brain points that out to you and you see it. So now we're gonna go again, and bam, I've got that looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna flip it over. That one looks pretty good. Then we're gonna do the same with this way. And this is just a quick and convenient way. Now you can see I've got a big lip here that's off. And when I look at it this way, I can actually see the difference. So what I want to do is take my scissors so they line up with the part that's straight and then just cut to that point from the edge that's not correct. And you can see right away that makes a big difference, you guys. Okay, now I'm still seeing a little bit out, but it's obvious where you have the problem when you really look, when you get used to it. And when you do something that makes it obvious, like this, now I can see that it's perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this edge. Perfect. Same thing with this edge. That looks perfect. Now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to bring these ones in. I'm going to do the same thing. Measure that. That's great. But having it straight is something else. So, now we've got our two wings. We've got a top wing, and we've got a bottom wing. Now this top wing... We're going to take the leading edge and we're just going to bend it down by grabbing as little of that leading edge as we possibly can. And I mean that literally, as little of the edge as you can. You don't really want a lot of lift on this upper wing unless you're going to put a lot of weight on it. But because this particular aircraft is going to have a small motor, even at the hobby shop, uh, which I'm finding is actually the best place to get your parts, Guy, I'm... I'm not saying that just because I have a, spending, a pending sponsorship with a local hobby shop. In fact, I've been doing my research and looking around, and it's what led to it. I called them to talk to them. Uh, I was thinking about ordering everything off AliExpress, and it turned out I could actually get a lot of the parts I want cheaper from them. So now I'm going to grab the next one, and I'm going to go down. So basically, when I was talking to them about the series that I wanted to do, they offered to sponsor me for this series. And I don't really want to give it away yet as to who the sponsor is, but they are a big hobby shop in the city of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. This is an adult channel, guys, but this is an engineering channel, and it's about to change because it's more than that. So this wing, if you look carefully, I have slightly also curved it up, okay, like this, and we're actually going to keep it like that. It's going to have a slight upward curve at the edges. And it's going to have an, a fairly decent lift moment, but nothing too crazy. We don't want to put a huge amount of lift on this wing. Now we're going to take this one that already has this nice lip. And this is a good lift moment. Believe it or not, that's enough. Now we have these two wings complete. They are as they will go on the airplane, believe it or not. Now we're going to make ourselves a tail. Now one of the things I will tell you when you make a tail is that you're actually better off not to have any lips on it like this. If you look very carefully here, guys, there's a lip here from the edge of that carton, and I want to make sure I got that lip off because it'll act like an aileron and point the aircraft at the ground, and I really don't want that. So again, I'm just going to try my best to make it straight, and then I'm going to put it up against here, and I'm going to see if it is. It actually doesn't look perfect, but it looks very close, and I mean very close. So... I'm actually seeing this end has just a little bit more material. So I'm going to trim it. And look at that. Does that look right to you? So let's check this edge for straightness. And it actually looks perfect. Now, what do you see when you look at this edge? Does this look correct? Heck no. It looks to me like it's way off. So I'm going to very carefully line up. Sorry about the shadow. These two edges perfectly and then look in the middle and I look what I see. So I'm going to start by looking down this this way and I'm just going to cut in a way that I believe will bring this to straight. And now I'm going to check it. And look at that. Nice, right? 
Okay, so now we go to the other edge and we double check it and we see I've got a little edge here that's over and I'm just going to line this up perfect and then try and line this one up perfect. And if you see a hump in the middle, you don't have it right. There's lots of little ways to check it, but I find this is about the best way. Use the floor, use a, a ruler, use anything with a straight edge so that you can check that because you really do want these as straight as possible. Now we're going to look at another aspect of this. Is this the right size tail? And you might say, heck no, Keith. That's a horrible design. But I actually don't agree with you. I actually think it's a great design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it and I'm going to pick the halfway mark. Now, in this case, I didn't even measure it. Last time I measured. But there's another way. You can just fold it and then crease it on the line, but not too hard. And all I want to do is make these two edges match like that. And now we have a nice wing that actually looks right for this type of design. Now we're going to take the edge of our scissors and I'm going to lay it along here until I get to the point where I want my aileron. I'm going to keep looking this way so that I see this and try again to make this as straight a line as possible. You might want to measure this part so that you can make your line straight, 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 guys. So what I like to do is actually just look at it and make myself an etch mark, okay? So I'm just gonna look, I'm gonna go to where I want this to be. Now I'm gonna make a mark. Now I'm gonna look very closely in the light and I'm gonna see if my mark is right. And I can see that it's a little bit off. I actually have more distance here than there. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So now we take a measure and I see I've got Pretty close here. If you put this right on this line, it looks very close. Very close. But I'm just going to measure here and check it all the way along and make sure. It's actually very close, guys. In fact, it's so close that I can just bend this up. And when I do, I'm going to check it for level. Now, I've seen that it's not quite level, so I want to just work this hinge. We're going to cut it later and form it perfectly. But for now, we're just going to try and fold it over and make it even all the way across here so that we have some kind of measure as to whether or not that's straight and we want it as straight as we can get it guys all right so now i'm looking at this i'm seeing a good straight edge here and i'm happy with the size of this okay i'm going to fold it over backwards I see, again i see it's fairly straight that actually is good enough it doesn't have to be perfect but close is good now we've got our front wings we've got our tail You'll notice this is a much bigger tail than you see on other aircraft that I have built. And the reason is really simple. What we want out of this is a big elevator, guys. I want to be able to have lots of elevator authority. And then we want to have a tail. So we're going to have a tail like this. Again, I'm going to take my, my, my ailerons. Now, you might say this looks pretty arbitrary, but I actually know what shapes work well as a tail, and this is going to be one of them. And now we're going to take this. I don't want my tail too sensitive, so I don't want this surface to be crazy big. But again, I'm just going to make a mark. I'm going to check it. I'm going to look to see that it looks pretty level. But in this case, you don't really need to. If this is a little off, it won't matter. If the elevator is a little off, you'll have to use trim when you're using your elevator, it'll pull one way or the other based on which side is bigger. I don't want that. This one really won't. If one side is a little wider than the other, it doesn't matter because it's a vertical surface and it'll come across and it'll work. So this is fine. Now that I have this, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the P47, where I'm going to take a little cut out of this, going this way, so that when I place the two together... They work, and I'm going to want to mount this ahead of the other one so that when I pull this one up, this doesn't interfere. So this will be mounted just like this. So we have full control and no interference. Okay, so there's three of my control surfaces made. Now, on this top wing, because this is meant to be a fairly beginner-friendly plane, I don't want crazy control surfaces like on my bigger biplane. Instead, I want a nice small set 
of control surfaces that aren't that small. So I'm actually going to just take this and look and try and make it as level as possible. And go all the way across, okay? I'm actually going to go all the way across, guys. Because one of the things I want to do to make sure that these are even is I'm going to fold it up and it looks good to me. I'm going to crack that line a little bit just by folding it back down the other way. And it's really not cracked yet. Like I said, we're going to have to cut this uh, and we're going to cut it part way through and then it'll be a lot freer flowing. Now, what I want to do is I want to take exact measurements here because we need to know exactly how big this is so that I can measure these, not so much. I want to decide how big my ailerons need to be. And in this case, I've decided on two inches. So in both directions, I'm gonna go in two inches and I'm gonna mark two inches. Now, from two inch mark, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna cut in until I get to the top of that mark. Right there. Now I'm gonna cut into the top of that mark. Now this one is a good video for you guys to watch because this will show you how to make your ailerons. So now we're gonna step just inside of that and we're gonna take this little piece of trim right out of here, okay, like that. And now we have a gap. That means these two edges, you can hear it rub. You don't want that. You don't want any rubbing whatsoever. And if you try and make these the same size, you won't have a big offset gap that doesn't look right. So when we cut them here and make hinges, we're just going to slit them part way through and then put a little glue gun glue over, smear it over on both sides to keep uh, the weight down, but to also make a good strong hinge. And these will be our ailerons. So now we have our ailerons, we have our tail, we have our tail is what? The elevator then we have this guy this is the actual tail this is what we call our rudder so we have your a rudder we have ailerons we have a tail now we also have one more in the middle we could use this to give flaps where I cut a little bit on either side for the spar and then it'll have flaps but I don't want to do that we're not actually going to need it that believe it or not is the end of this build so now we're going to take this because it's really not. There's still a couple more things to do, but really, it's very simple, very easy, and anybody could be doing this. So I recommend it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look. I want a nice smooth angle from here to here. If you put this at about a 45, guys, and then run it until these that the wingtips get touched at 45, so we've got roughly a 45 to the tips of the of the wings from the tips of one set to the tips of the other set. <coughs> That'll give you about the right proportion for the length of the spar you're going to need. And what I'm seeing here is that this will be six inches long. This is perfect because it's just about six inches wide. It's actually just under that with our longest swing. The other one is just a little shorter than that. So we're going to make a six inch carbon fiber spar for this. And that is going to be what we use. Then we're going to make a little tiny landing gear. We're going to make, like I show in the biplane, uh, the small indoor foam biplane. This is going to be the even smaller biplane. That one has a one foot. This is going to be a six inch wingspan. That one is basically 10 and a half inches long, 11 inches long and a foot wide. This one's going to be, just like I just showed you, a six inch long will give you enough room to mount out here so you'll you'll actually mount it on at this part it won't be mounted here so it can move freely and that'll give you a good long chunk over in front of the wing i could even go a little shorter and make this maybe five and a half at the shortest but at five and a half inches by six inch wingspan that's actually the correct proportions it should be just a little wider than it is long so i'm actually going to recommend that this is a great way to go for you guys is to go six inches across five and a half inches long now if you do that 
you're going to find that you have a little bit of overhang for your motor to go on. That's good. The farther away that is, the better from the edge of the wing because it'll help to angle it and control it. Um, basically, if you have, it's kind of like a pendulum effect. If I put weight here and the wing is here, it takes a fair bit of weight to move that down. But if I put a longer nose on it and put the weight at the end of the nose, it'll tip down a lot faster and it makes it easier to CG the aircraft. So we don't want to leave it. It's actually why I recommended six inches because if you do it at six inches, you have a nice long section out front and you can kind of play around and make it just about like this. I actually recommend that. So for this one, just because you want to be able to CG it easily and all that stuff, you might think you should make it longer and all this stuff. But in the end, we're going to be able to CG it fairly easily, guys. Um, and I'll show you how to do that later. So for now, anywhere between five and a half and six inches will do for this. But the longer the tail, the slower it'll be to do an, a loop. The shorter the tail, the faster it'll do a loop. So also, the shorter the tail, the faster it'll turn around. So I want mine at five and a half inches, and that's how I'm going to do it. And the reason is, it'll let me CG it, but it'll also keep it a little shorter and allow it to turn a little sharper. That being said, this is done. We're going to stop now, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit here of both wings up close. I've given you all the measurements. You can see... The angles on this wing also this wing we are going to keep straight guys it's not going to be like the other one where it's slightly uh angled up or down it's actually just going to be a straight wing and all of this will make this a really nice build guys so i recommend you stick along with this channel like subscribe and share even though the camera work isn't the grass the best the designs are good i don't do bad designs my designs always work and they work as subscribed i always ha hint hint subscribe like share because unlike a lot of these cats out there who are trying to sell you on a kit they've designed that doesn't really work that well i'm going to show you a method by which you can build your own plane cheap 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 and make it fly well because any decent wing will fly well it's just a matter of getting the center of gravity right getting the weight balance right getting the dynamic balance right getting the proportions right and the size of the ailerons right the size of the motor, the size of the battery, all that stuff. The others are running 300 to 400 mAh for the bigger aircraft for the 12-inch series. This one's going to be running 200 or even smaller batteries, maybe 150 or even 100 mAh on a much smaller motor, namely 3.5 uh, millimeter or bigger, but I won't go any higher than, say, 6.5 millimeter for this build series. Um, but I'm going to keep it lighter and smaller than that. I'm actually going to go with three and a half millimeter because they're cheap. And I'm going to do a full series of these six inch planes where there'll be no more than a six inch wingspan. Uh, and I'm going to do a bunch of them for you guys. I love doing them. They're so much fun. And even just out of these scrap boxes, I have enough to go build another airplane. Um, if I build out of this material, take a look at the, that's a hamburger box and take a look at the dimensions. It's not big enough. So the trick is you want to use a big enough source material. Um, but the edges of these boxes are perfect. Um, and if you look, I'm just going to show you the size of this box. So you can see the size of box that I'm working with. They're basically 8 inches. Uh, if you go from one end to the other, it's an 8-inch box. So when you see those 8-inch fry containers or hamburger containers or onion ring containers, know that those are gold for your builds. Anyway, this one's getting pretty long again. Uh, sorry for that, but anyone where I'm teaching you how to build an aircraft or even walking you through it like this one where I'm showing you how to do it, there are a couple more things you need to do before we're done, actually. But those are featured in other videos, and I will gladly show them to you. But basically, it just means you smooth down the back wing. You crush it as much as you can. We've already formed the front wing for its lift. And we're going to crush down the tail of this wing and this wing only. Not the back of these two. You don't need that. You want them as strong as possible. Don't thin them out. You also don't need to do that to the front of this wing. But I recommend that you do because it'll make it sharper. And it'll give it a slimmer profile in the air. Slimmer and more streamlined. Same with this. You can crush this front leading edge down. 
and make it thinner. See that? I just crushed it a little, and you can already tell it's a little thinner. Watch. If I squish it, it gets a little thinner. So the object is to put it on the ground and squish that whole leading edge out. Not the actual aileron itself. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it strong. And you don't want to do this part right at the top. You just want to do this so that it's a little tiny bit thinner. And it's only a little tiny bit, guys. But that little tiny bit does matter. The less resistance, the better. So I'm going to cut this one here. You could also do the same with this one at the front. Just to give it that sharp entry. And because I'm pressing it down to the ground this way, it keeps the bottom flat and will slightly round this top edge because I'm only pressing down on the top edge as close to the edge as I can get. What that'll mean is that it'll basically make this a little very mild lift surface because it'll crush down that edge. And we don't want to do any more than that. That is as much as I want to do to it. Just to thin that edge a little bit, crush it down, and that'll actually help. Uh, give it a little sleeker profile. We're not trying to make it faster, but to fly forward with less resistance. So this one's done. I'll uh, I'll cut out and show you guys the next vehicle in the next video. For now, I'm going to focus on making a couple of these six inches. I'm going to make one that is a little slow flyer uh, airplane. That's this guy. And then I'm going to make a another one that's much more aggressive uh, and you'll see that one too. The bigger biplane is my 3D biplane. This one is meant to be 2D. It's just meant to take you up, fly you around in a nice fashion, and look pretty scale while doing it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like, subscribe, because this build is dirt cheap to make. I'm using all the super light components, super cheap. You're going to be able to put on the throttle to climb, and wait. When you add the elevator in, it'll, it'll flip over backwards and do a nice loop when you want it to. In addition, the rudder and ailerons aren't too big, so you won't have too crazy a roll rate or too crazy a tail action. It'll be very forgiving in the air, guys. That being said, we're done for this video. This will take another video still because I have a few other things I want to do to this, and when it's finished, it'll be completed. That being said, I love you guys, man. It's why I do what I do, and I do it for free, guys. I'm actually going to be approaching some companies to see if they will work with me because I want to do this. I really want to do this for you guys. I love building and designing, and I can do it, but it would be so much better if I had a good 3D printing setup. I could donate my CAD files and make it so that everybody else can have them for free. I'm doing that here, but you have to build them from scratch. This is hard to put into a 3D printer, but it's easy enough when you look at the dimensions and you see what everything is you could make this yourself and put this into a 3d printer it's not that hard that being said just so i can't forget about it later i'm going to show you don't forget that's not quite to the edge that's close one and a half inch basically by one and a half inch pretty much uh, and that's good enough. And then other than that, you just need to make the profile. It, they like to have a sharp run here and then be rounded at the top, guys. And a squared off aileron actually flies really well. So for all those reasons, it's that shape. We are now finito. Uh, wait, no. You might say there's one more surface here. So let's get a good measure on that. Three inches which is really great, and you might laugh when you see it's a, a, a six-inch wing with a three-inch rudder, but or, or an elevator, sorry. But again, we're looking at not quite three inches. No, that's not inches. That's a whole other form of measurement. So let's take a look. That's centimeters. So we're looking at two and three-quarter centimeters, or about one and an eighth inch. In the end... This is a perfect little build for you guys. I highly recommend a little tiny biplane like this if you want to fly indoor and do it inexpensively, guys. This is a great little design. I will show it to you in more detail in future videos. We will build the spar. We will build a little landing gear. We'll put a little motor and prop on it, the whole ball of wax, and it's going to be RC. But this one will not be a crazy amount of channels. One, two, three, and four. That would be four channels. If I can find a way to make this little guy four-channel, I will. If I decide it won't handle that much weight, which is probable, I'm going to make it three-channel. 
which will mean the tail will only be the, the vertical surface. We might not need this because if the throttle can climb and dive you, that's all you're going to need. You, that is your elevator, and that's doable. I don't want to do it that way. I really want to make it my elevator and my ailerons. If I have to leave a channel out, I would rather leave out the tail, believe it or not. There are lots of people doing it both ways, but we're going to look at, in the course of this video series, what the benefits are of each way and walk you through it so that you can choose for yourself. I would encourage you, when you look at my video series, don't build any of the aircraft until you see the finished aircraft and I say to you, hey, this is finished. I recommend this. Right now, I'm saying this is my design. I'm going to walk you through how to build it and I'm going to blueprint it here and show it to you, but I'm also going to test it. Don't build it until I test it. That's true. If you expect it to be great, wait till I'm done testing it and then build it exactly, perfectly, precisely the way I tell you and don't make any changes because I do test them. I thoroughly examine their flying characteristics and then make improvements. That being said, I'm going to end this video and I will show you guys what's up in the future. But in every one of these videos, you're going to find useful information. You're going to find a new design. That's the whole point. So each video series will comprise two videos at least on the individual aircraft, two to three. And then in general, you'll have videos on power selection, on motor selection, on prop selection. Even though I will recommend certain ones, I'm going to recommend no bigger than a 200 mAh battery for this and a three and a half mil motor. And when you do that, you'll find that you're running very light gear and you'll have more room for servos. I'm also going to recommend that you run a two-in-one board. It'll give you two servos for your ailerons and the receiver, and then you'll have another one mounted on the other wing, and that'll be another uh, channel for your secondary system. So you're going to have two servos up here, another one here, and if you have room, if we can run it, we'll do another one here. I know that we can, on a biplane, on a monoplane, it can be very hard to make them four channel guys. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to go with a biplane. It'll make this easier to make four channel and that's what I want. That's why I've cut all the control surfaces. If I didn't want it four channel, I would leave out the tail. You can live without the tail, believe it or not, or the throttle. And I leave that up to you because if we put enough lift on it, I've shown you how to make VGs in other videos, make them, put them on the leading edge, put a VG there a long one that runs the whole length of the wing and you'll find that you have a ton of lift then you'll find as soon as you put the throttle on it'll climb like crazy and you won't need this but i'm not going to put that on this aircraft i want it to fly without those and just to show you how that works because if i build it just right i can just let it go at an altitude and it'll just stay at that altitude and fly and i can use the elevator and rudder and it'll be great so that's the end of this video guys sorry about the length but it is worth it to show you everything and to explain as much detail as I can to you and give you an idea of why I do things the way I do. That being said, we're nowhere near done with this plane.